Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is one of the most beautiful places on the earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host, Dennis Simpson, as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. They're also an award-winning Remax office. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to figure out your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007 or find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. It is another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out. With a special episode. The it's not what? just another one. It's a special one. It is not other. just another one. It is another special episode. Did I do that right? Well, no? I don't know. <laughs> it's a super special episode. It is because this time we have Miss Clara Nicolosi, who's going to give us a market update, and we are interested. How are you, Miss Clara? I am great. How are you guys doing on this good Friday, Friday? Yeah, we're good. We are very good, actually. Good. Uh, it, it's a great day in a lot of ways, if you get my drift. Uh, I posted a picture on Facebook this morning of the tomb rolled away, which we'll put Sunday morning. But uh, And right beside it, it said, he ain't here, y'all. So mm -hmm. that's one of my comments for the day. We'll leave that be, shall we? Hmm? That's yes? the Arkansas Love it. version. Yeah, the Arkansas <laughs> version. And I, I, sh I should have been more politically, uh, more politically. I should have been more grammatically correct. If, if in South Arkansas, it's y'all, if there's several y'alls, it's yuns. So yeah, I might've should have said that yeah. too. You know, you oh, that's true. That's All right. We got to start off. We've got to acknowledge the elephant in the room. Remax of hot Springs village. This is Ms. Claire Nicolosi, the, uh, the principal owner of Remax of hot Springs village. Now a sponsor of our beloved podcast, because we share a passion. The passion is she is really intent on helping people that don't have an awareness of Hot Springs Village to learn more about the place. You know, we are we are jointly promoting the beauty, the grandeur, all that is Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. So we appreciate having them as a sponsor. Go to their website, explorehsv.com. I'll give you their 100, 800 number, 1-800-364. 9,007. That's 800 9,007. So thanks, Claire. We appreciate the partnership. Excellent. I, I am so glad to be in partnership with you guys. And you guys, I think we're very much aligned in having, wanting to let people know about all the great things our community has to offer and not just the people that live here, those that are out seeking for where that next home might want to be. I would hope that they would branch out and, and find some of your great videos and, and want to learn more. And I, I think this is a great partnership for both of us. Well, We're recording this literally on Good Friday. So it is Friday, April the 15th, 2022. Take a guess, Clara, our email newsletter, the signups for our email newsletter in the last 30 days, the number two, the number two state where we're getting signups for the email newsletter, your guess would be? Texas. New York. Wow, I love that. Who'd have thunk it? I New love York. that. I, I love like anyone the, that's got money that wants to move here. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they got them big New York dollars, not those little Arkansas dollars, right? And, and good bagels and pizza. And so good we'll bagels take it off. And <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of New Yorkers here. In fact, all of the golf amigos, I mean, yeah. at least two of them, they're from New York. So yeah. we got that going on. Well, there is one critical difference between us that we need to describe between between Hot Springs Village Inside Out and between Hot Springs Village Real, uh, Real uh, Remax. There's about 157 million differences. And that's the number. Point yeah. seven. 157 points so don't leave out the point seven that's no 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 because last year clara your office won the award for what 
Yeah, I'm so excited. We were actually the number one single owned Remax in the entire state of Arkansas based on total production, meaning the, the value of the homes sold. We were number one and we couldn't be more excited about that. And that's out of one office in one gated community that has probably 19,000 people ish, ish. And you did $157.7 million. How many full-time yeah. agents do you have? Uh, I've got about 28 full-time agents. That's awesome. Congrats. I heard so here more sales than any all the others combined. Did I hear that too? Well, that number is that is always a moving number, but typically speaking, combined, we do quite a bit or a large percentage of the sales of the entire community. Yeah. And that can yeah. that that continues to be where we're headed. And we hope to continue that for <laughs> this year as well. It's good to be queen. It is. I we we hear tell. We hear tell. I always said king because I could never be king. <clears throat> when I become king. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, congrats to you and the entire team. Well done. Absolutely. Well done. Thank you. I, I have a great team and they are hard workers and they are not only a team, but they're a family. And, and I think um, agents that join us realize that, that once you join Remax and, and settle in, you're part of the family. Yeah, we've seen that before after and after. Uh, let's cut to the real estate stuff. Let's talk about what the market's like in the village right now. And and since the last time we talked, there have been a lot of changes. I mean, last time we talked, the interest rates were at what? And what are they now? Well, the interest rates continue to inch up. And, you know, the, the rates are changing daily. Unfortunately, you really have to keep an eye on them. And for those who are locking in, they probably need to lock in sooner than later because we do see them inching up. You know, we were so fortunate. You know, we saw uh, two point, you know, two point seven five there for a while, and that inched up into the lower threes and the upper threes. We're in the fours, solid now, and and we see that moving north. So um, rates are going up, but I, I don't want that to scare people away. I don't think they'll go up too much higher. They might go up a little bit more, but as we were talking about earlier, at least it's not the seventeen percent that it was back in the eighties. So we're, we're grateful for that. Well, I mean, who on earth would buy a house at 17%, right, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> I did. We did, you know, it was the only option you had, you know, we're talking over 30 years ago, but yeah. In fact, we were talking before we hit record, uh, when we sold that house, we, we felt so blessed because we didn't have to take our checkbook to closing and write Absolutely. the buyers a check because nearly everybody that we knew, you know, at the time was having to do that. Okay. Claire, put in perspective for our audience. So the interest rate goes up a point, a point and a half, even two points. So on a typical house, what are we talking? I mean, what's the real impact? Because I think we, we look at those numbers and we go, Oh, but then you start kind of crunching and it's like, it's, it's not, I think, it's not necessarily a, a deal breaking kind of a number. No, not on the front end. It's not, you know, unfortunately with most loans are amateurs amortized over 30 years. And that's really that significant number at those lower price points. You might purchase a house at let's say $150,000. So your total payback might be like 225, but with that interest rate being higher, that's when that payback number starts inching up. That's when what you owe five years down the road or 10 years down the road really hasn't come down significantly off of the principal that you pay. That, that's the downside. But even as far back as you know, 2000, meaning the year 2000, the interest rates were at seven and a half and 8%. So at four or four and a half, this really isn't, it isn't that bad. I don't see it growing too much more out of this, but I, I do see it sticking in this area for a while. Well, let me come back around something we I wanted to be asking you for a while. You know, there's a modern term, I say modern somewhat, F-O-M-O, -O, fear of messing out. It seems to be kind of rampant because on one hand, prices are significantly higher, the interest rates going up, but at the same time, people are like, I just don't want to, I don't want to miss out. I want this to be my chance to buy something. What do you say to those people? Well, we are in an unusual market. You know, we're in the market, and we've talked about this. We're in a market where 
Um, if you decide that you want to sell your home, we really need you to have an exit plan, meaning where are you going to go next? Because you'll be homeless. And so I think that's where some of this fear of missing out is. It's like, okay, I know I want to sell my home. I know we're in a good market, but what am I going to do next? I know I'm getting a better value for my home today than I would have, let's say, five years ago. So I can afford to push the envelope a little bit as to what I'm buying because I'm getting more money on what my investment here is now. So I really think that's some of that fear of missing out. It's like, okay, I can stay in this house and maybe not get this top dollar or I can be homeless. And, and, and that is reality right now. When we go to list a house what, that we ask that, where are you going? Are you going to, you know, rent for a while, which is harder to do right now. I mean, we've got folks moving into RVs so that they have that, that some place to go moving in with children for a couple of months. And I think that sounds like a lot of fun and um, could be unique, you know, having another plan because in our market, it's going to sell. It just is. It depends on your kids about that moving in thing. Right, Randy? Uh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that could be a great relationship. But then it, might be it depends on your kids' kids, too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Randy? <laughs> oh, well, you know. I love my grandkids. I don't know that I want to live with them, though. You know? On another note. <laughs> yeah, I got, road, I got Road Rash Roy to, to you know, who's who could really who could really do some damage to me. So I got I to gotta keep my... I got to keep my eyes on him. So you, may he's run the, out he's bubble wrap. you may run out of bubble wrap before yeah, he gets yeah, thrown. Yeah, you yeah, know? definitely. Well, I also wanted to come back in. There, there seems to be a a myriad of these things coming up. We've had some great interviews lately that will be coming out very shortly. We interviewed Shane Lester. Uh, you may know Shane from Wonder State Mortgage in Little Rock. Great guy. And one mm -hmm. of his comments was, it may take eight to 10 years to work out all the homes we need to build to meet the demand. Where did Absolutely. all this demand come from? What's going on? Well, and I don't think it's current demand. I think it's pent up demand from the past. I read an art article recently that said we actually have uh, 8 million homes to build in the U.S., but we only have supplies for 7.5 million. I think that's part of our problem with the supply chain, you know, with, with COVID, the impact of COVID, with the impact of the weather and, and wood and supply chain issues. I, I, I think it's difficult. And, and that's what we're looking at. And I, I don't doubt that seven to eight years to work out all the difficulties. I mean, build a new house, but you might want to find a refrigerator. You might need a heat and air system in every aspect of that new home that the price point has changed. Well, you know, we interviewed Brandon Ketter, which his show will be coming out very shortly too, which is the builder for Renaissance Homes that y'all do a lot of work with. Wonderful homes, really nice, top notch. And he was saying that everybody's so, that it's kind of that fear of missing out thing. We want to break ground now and we want to get this in the ground. And he's like, okay, let me explain how this is going to go. We're going to order your windows and your appliances and then we're going to wait six weeks and then we're going to break ground. So those will all come together at the same time. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody, no. you know, we've got some pretty impatient people, if you know what I mean. That we do. And I'm sure Brandon mentioned, you know, the price of lumber is all over the place. You know, we, we thought we had it leveled out. The next time I turn around, I mean, I'm seeing uh, new construction and, and builders coming back going, wait a minute, your lumber package is up significantly from where it was when I quoted you that price. And, you know, we just need things like that to level out. We can get the, the average supply chain to level out. I think we'll be in a good spot, a better spot than we are today. Well, there's just a bunch of new realities. I took my son. My son has a home inspection company here in the DFW area. And he bought one of these new Ford Rangers, you know, that smaller, that new smaller Ford truck, because he doesn't need one, a big pickup. The, the one that sold out. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. he put a five hundred dollar deposit on it in November. It was it's built in or assembled in Mexico, and he took delivery of it yesterday. And I'm sitting there talking to the general manager, and he's like, you know, it's a completely new day in the business for two decades. Never sold a house, never sold a car at MSRP. Everything's at MSRP. Now this happens to be a really great Ford dealership that does not mark it up above MSRP. Right. So good for them. But he said, now everything is at MSRP and nearly everything is online. And I said, and the wait times are what? He said, well, it depends on what the vehicle is. He said, but minimum, minimum 12 weeks, you know, so 
from wow. the car industry to the real estate to any kind of, of retail, certainly we've seen it in, in food services and, and restaurant business. I mean, just the whole game has changed for, for our audience. Who's, who's particularly out of state, Claire, because we largely hear from these people. I mean, like I said, our number two, the number two state for current signups for our newsletter, which is really just a recap of the shows that we released the prior week is currently New York state. Well, who to thunk it? Right. Mm -hmm. And we hear from people in the Carolinas and Florida and Seattle down to California who are just looking for whatever reason. And the reasons are all over the board. They're looking at Arkansas. They're looking at hot Springs village. They've stumbled bummed around on our podcast. We thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. and they're intrigued, you know, by the community for those people that may be desperate to move here and for every house that's sold, how many losers are there? Meaning how many people aren't going to end up, aren't going to get that house, but they would, they, but they made a genuine offer on it and would like to, I mean, and, and how can we, how can we give them any hope and, or optimism or can we? Well, that is an interesting point. You know, the good news is I think as the summer comes along, I think we will gain uh, some more confidence. And I, you know, with, COVID being more relaxed than it was, I think we'll start seeing more houses on the market. So I do think we'll start seeing our inventory pick up a little bit, which will help for the supply and demand. Now it won't solve that because it won't be enough. So I, I don't think you'll see as many of the 11 offers accepted one that was $100,000 over the asking and two backups. I, I, I'm hoping we will resolve some of that but we are seeing that right now. I, I, I think our hope is confidence and more people putting homes on the market who are ready to make that next move. Are we seeing, are we seeing some of the aging population in the village and they're at a stage in life where they realize, okay, we really need to get back closer to the kids, uh, maybe for health reasons or whatever. And given the market being what it is, time to cash out. And even though we don't want to leave the village, but just because of the circumstances of our life, are, are we seeing much of that? I'm just curious. I, I think we're seeing some people who are making decisions to move closer to children, but we also see those that transition to maybe Good Samaritan Campus or Mount Carmel or downsizing. You know, that's where Madeiras Gardens has been so popular. That's why the Siega subdivision was, you know, smaller you know, a, a, a choice footprint home in a small neighborhood, brand new, uh, small knit community. I, we're all over the place in that. We really are. I mean, just just depends on that seller, where they're at in life and what they want to do. We've got some people that say, I'm, I'm going to stay here. I'm, you know, we've got such a diverse family situation for just about everyone where Hot Springs Village might be in the middle. We might have children in Florida and children, children in Colorado or, you know, California and Chicago or, you know, the diversity of mixed families or, you know, where the children have been able to get jobs or whatever. And the village just happens to be just as close as anywhere else might be. So rather than pick and choose, stay here. Why not? This most beautiful place on earth, as well as the best kept secret. I think that's well put. I will we'll say it. it... I keep coming around this into my mind and I'm thinking, you know, we, we know how special this is, Claire. We've talked about this for years. Is this, is this what's happening outside the gates too? Are there, are there 10 offers at a hundred thousand dollars for, and for every house or some houses or what? Absolutely. I've heard from um, some friends that are in the real estate industry in Texas and Florida, and it, it looks just the same. Um, and even the offers are being structured more competitively, where the buyers are offering to pay many more of the seller's expenses in the contract, which historically the seller would pay. And I'm not going to allude to any of that because I don't want to give anyone a suggestion or a hint as to what to do. But, yeah. but, the, but, but the offers are being um, restructured to a seller's advantage so that the buyer will get the house. I heard a podcast. I won't give it away much, but I, I heard a podcast the other day where 
uh, a, a lady was saying in the ladies from Fedville, she was saying that one of the buyers offered to pay the seller's commission, which I had never heard of and their closing. Well, that could come up to 10, $12,000. Okay. Well, why don't you just put another 10 or $12,000 on the offer? Not the same, not the same to them because they saw that as total dollars as opposed to net dollars and Anyway, it, it, everybody sees that deal structured a different way. So I think the takeaway from this conversation without giving away too much is be creative on how you list your, your pro, on how you uh, submit your offer. Your offer doesn't have to be the highest price. And that's why I think a lot of people get confused about is, well, we, we just have to give the most money. Hmm, maybe, maybe you give them another 90 days to live in the house till they find something. Maybe you, you know, whatever, right, Clara? Absolutely. There are so many different terms in that contract that could be a negotiable and could be an advantage to that seller to want to make them choose your offer. You are totally right on that, Dennis. Absolutely. What's the number one question you get these days? Oh, that's interesting. I probably still get what's my house worth. And that's a, and that's a unique question because we are seeing appraisals some a few appraisals come back where the house doesn't appraise now remember we're getting offers in above that price that that our real estate professionals are pricing the homes at and the, sometimes every once in a while that appraisers come back and saying you know i wasn't able to find a comparative that has closed within the neighborhood or or a, a certain area around that home to be able to comp that house out and that is we are seeing that more as well well, is that because there's fewer cash buyers or is that simply because the houses just don't comp? I think it's the uniqueness of our community, but I, I know my aunt sold a house in Florida recently and the same exact thing happened. You have to have the home within a certain area of that home that closed within a certain amount of days. And in our community, you could have something on the Coronado golf course that's the same vintage age size amenity that's in the Ponce de Leon area and they the appraiser probably won't look at the two of those the same because they're not the same they're not the same area so that that's part of what we're saying are you seeing well, are you seeing folks that are that are just absolutely mercenary it's like you know I want to sell my house but you know I'm going to stick something just completely stupid on it and hopes and cross my fingers that, that you know that somebody will bite on it I don't think I've seen that as much. I, I think the sellers um, have a good idea what they want for the house. And and once we get those 11 offers in, who knows what number is going to be on that? I mean, could be off the charts. Like I said, recently, $100,000 over the asking. What was the base price on that house? If I, I won't tell you. I you won't, won't tell you. Okay, okay. <laughs> Was, was it six digits or seven digits? Anyway, we'll just keep going here. We'll talk. It was six. But, it was well, six. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and the re one of the reasons I ask is because I, I, I saw this the other day. I'm always paying attention to the real estate market and seeing. And some of the homes, and pardon my analogy here, some of the homes that now are on the market um, are not the premium homes. And I don't mean premium homes and price wise. I mean, it's an older home that somebody's asking a, a more premium number for is, is the market changing and some of those lower end homes are coming up to the market and they're going, Hey, this is a heck of a time to buy or, or to sell. Well, I do think we're seeing some better values in some homes that probably need a little love. I think a house is a house is a house and depends on what you're willing to pay for it, what the buyer is willing to pay for it. Um, I was um, I, I was looking into townhomes in the DeSoto Courts area, and I ran across one that was for sale over $100,000, and believe it or not, I was thrilled, but that's just to tell of our market. You know, typically speaking, when our market's normal or typical, people want the amenity homes they want, the golf homes and the view homes and the lake homes, and then as our our market becomes more scarce. We're selling more interior homes. Then we start seeing more land sell. And then we start seeing more townhouses move. And that's where we're at now. Our townhomes offer great single family homes. The only difference is they're connected and they are, they're going for a price that they probably should have matured to many years ago, but we had a different market. 
Well, you know, I, I was looking at the market, you know, Jeff and I, Jeff Atkins and I have been investors in real estate for over 20 years here and looking at property. And typically we have been until recently buying mostly raw land. Well, the raw land prices were so uh, flat and low mm -hmm. that as the, as the price of the homes start to expand, you know, it used to be Clara, and this is just my experience. We're on the main channel here. I like it on the main channel. It's okay. I have other people who say they don't want to be on the main channel with all that boat traffic. Oh yeah. Yeah. One boat, every whip stitch. Well, not today. It's good Friday, right? There were yeah. like three yesterday. My point oh, crowded. Being, oh yeah. Crowded. Yeah. <laughs> my, my point being, I, I, I didn't see much of a difference between the Cove and the main channel when we bought a few years ago. Now, as the prices come back higher, that's a huge delineation that I, I never saw because all the m numbers were so flat. Is, is that something you're seeing too? Absolutely. Matter of fact, we were talking about some vacant land sales earlier. And at one point in time, folks wouldn't have looked at any lot that might back up to Balearic or DeSoto or some of our main roads. Now, mind you, they're not on, but the road, that it that it fronts might back up to that and and I'm like that that's a choice lot right now you know that's that's a great place to be you know our, our DeSoto is busy but it's not you know it's not the I-30 you know I, it's got plenty of traffic so I, we are seeing that we are seeing where choice I think has a different definition now <laughs> It well, seems to me. It seems to me that the pricing in the village, you know, w w was suppressed and was relatively low for such a long time. And now that it's bumped up, do you think that now we're it? It, it may not be so much a wild fluctuation, but reaching kind of a new plateau at least for a period of time. That is certainly my hope and prayer, Randy. I mean, I I really hope that is the case. You know. 2008 really hurt us, really hit the whole country as a whole. Not only did we have the financial issues that we were going through here in the village, we had the NRPI issues where eventually they pulled up roots and all of their compensation to our POA. So we were hurting. We just were. And, you know, we, we all maintained during the early, you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So to see things start to bump up, to see the interest rates still remain below five to see the scarcity of our market. But I would hope that we could maintain this, that that we might fall off a little bit, you know, some, but not at the, you know, not a, a cliff, not fall, you know, straight off a cliff. I, I would hope that this is going to come down. I mean, evidently it's going to come down and who knows when this year, next year. Um, but I, I, I would hope that it would be a small decline over a larger period of time and that this is more the norm. Well, two things I'd like to comment to that, and I'm not answering the question, but I want to just make note. Uh, yeah, 2009 was brutal for a lot of things. It was brutal to NRPI, who, whether you loved them or hated them, it was off and that's national recreational properties, the Eric Estrada promoter that, that came in and was redeveloping the village. Um, and part All right, of those, give us some context. So for our listeners well, and viewers that like, I don't have a clue what he just said. Yep. 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 There was a national recreational properties company that came from California. They brought Eric Estrada from the chip show and they did a lot of infomercials and they, and I don't, I don't think this is improper Clara, but they inflated some of the numbers because they would fly you out, give you a tour and it was an expensive tour. And then they would sell you a piece of property that might be $10,000 over what the cost should be. Well, when they pulled out and all of their marketing pulled out, we're looking at the reality of, okay, where's the, where's the bottom here? Where's the floor? And the fact of the matter was it still has an amazing intrinsic value. There's no issue to it. We just had to get people back here to see that. And, and to answer well, the I can question, give you, I can give you a perfect illustration. We I've got a favorite, a favorite short-term rental place where Rhonda and I come and, and stay it's on a golf course. They bought from that company that came from Florida. They came from Fort Lauderdale. The price was f around 40 grand for the lot. They're thinking, well, and I mean, man, Fort Lauderdale at the time that they bought f be way more expensive on a golf course. So they thought they were getting a deal, you know, mm -hmm. yes. they didn't find out until they, until they were ready to build. They didn't find out, you know, we got hammered, but they, they love it. And, 
it's home. So there's that. Keep going. And frankly, in, in today's market, that might be a very comparable price, right, Clara? Yeah, and, and the truth of the matter is you take that same lot and you park it 30 miles outside of Chicago or Fort Lauderdale or any other major city, that land value is higher than that. And that's really where we would like to aspire to be. I do believe that that our worth is that, our value isn't that yet. And that and that's that's the dichotomy that we really need to overcome in our community. And I think over time we will. We get, you know, we get uh, built out to the uh, area that we need to be and and we are more of a draw to other areas of the country. I think the land value that we really have will will reveal itself. And that's why I encourage some folks, you know, they still love Hot Springs Village. They still don't mind paying their dues. I'm like, hold on to it. You know, what we have today may change tomorrow. We don't know. We're getting the bypass. You know, we are working harder with different organizations and groups to, to tell folks about our community, just like you guys are trying to do. And, and let's all hope that we can get to where the value of our land equals that of other areas, or at least comes closer to that. Well, Clara, I've been here 20 years. You've been here significantly just about that long. Mm -hmm. The, the bottom line is I've never seen anything like this. And I've watched two or three other booms and busts like this within RPI and other people. But the bottom line is the fundamentals have finally flattened out. We're here. We're here. There's not one of my complaints, Randy, you talked about the people that bought for 40 K for a golf lot. That's a fair price in any other market. One of the comps and, and then Clara knows this too. When you have a comp, one of the conditions is you have to have a knowledgeable buyer. When you fly people in from Florida and you pay their airfare and you pay for them for a three-day, two-day night vacation, and then you bus them out here and show them a property and say it's $40,000 and they don't do their research, you don't always have a knowledgeable buyer. That's not where we are now. That was long past. Yes. And as, as uh, Twigs used to say, you know, the whole timeshare three-day, two-night tour thing doesn't work anymore. We, we have to let you decide. We can't just All right. talk you People into have it. a big question mark over their head like, Twigs? Who is Twigs? <laughs> See, oh, Dennis Andy. does this, Clara. He's been there so long. He drops these names like like the per person in New York's got no clue what you just said. So a explain. former general manager, a former there general you. manager who had great vision. I'll give him that. He, he Tan him out to what vision. would be a city manager. But yeah. we're not a city, so we don't have a city manager. We got a general manager. Yeah. So Clara, what do you see the market being like right now today? Well, good question. You know, I've, I've been pulling stats and I pulled some for the end of March just to see where we're at. And I took a snapshot from March of 2020. Um, and it looks like from January 1 to March of 2020, we sold about 127 homes in our community. Good number of homes, good pace of homes. We all agree that that was a great market. Excited to say that this year we've sold 156 in the same period. So that's up about 30% from 2020. Unfortunately, we're down a little bit from 2021. So we sold about 170 homes last year in the same time period. But I'm not letting that be a discouraging factor. We're only looking at three months of our, of our year. We've had some cold days at the start of this year. We've had some rainy days. I think this weekend we're going to get some more rain. And our, the best is yet to come. You know, Easter really is that everyone in the pool type, type of time here in our community. And I think we're going to have an amazing summer, some great ground, uh, rounds of golf. I think we'll have plenty of people visiting. And I think we still have a chance to end 2022, just like we did with 2021. So that. Well, I, think, the, I think in 21, there were probably some more bargains too. There were there, because the prices really hadn't got to where they got to at the end of 21, right? Yeah, I th it was it was definitely a learning market. And I think now that we've learned all that, now we're putting it in, into play. So I think if we can just continue what we did in 21 and replicate that in 2022 with the uptick, a slight uptick in the interest rates, I, I think we're going to have an amazing year. I want to ask you about new construction, but first I want to make a pitch. Remax of Hot Springs Village, uh, we're speaking with principal owner broker Clara Nicolosi, the num number is 800-364-9007. That's 800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. 
That's explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village, far and away the number one uh, real estate uh, agency inside Hot Springs Village. Super, super great people, real experts uh, in the place. So those of you that are interested uh, in our community, we urge you to contact them. New construction, because we get this over and over. We've already talked about the supply chain issues and all of that aside. New construction inside the village. What What is your crystal ball show? I'm coming in from out of state, but I really would like to, to build something. I get that it may take an extended period of time, but what is your crystal ball telling you about new construction inside the village in the I next 18 months or so? I think because of our sub, uh, supply chain and the scarcity of homes currently, I think our new construction will continue to grow. I think we're still seeing lot sales at the same amount we did last year. I think that will continue. Um, I just think people are going to be willing to wait that nine months, that 12 months, maybe even longer to get that dream home. I, we're seeing a lot of builders that are building specs. I think if you're coming in with that specialty plan and have to have it exactly this way, might take you a little bit longer because you're going to have to get on a builder's list who has the you know who has the timeline to add that in to whatever they're already doing. But definitely strong, definitely still happening, and awesome to see. I was thrilled to see over in uh, one of the uh, older neighborhoods a house that had burned down or and needed to be refurbished brand new house going up in that neighborhood and replacing that home. And I was like, yes, that's what we need to see. Not just, you know, at one point in time, everyone said, well, the only new construction you're going to see is at the east end of our community, you know, the, the end closer to Little Rock, because that was where more land was available. That was the newer homes. But we're starting to see a little more diversity in where the homes might be as well. And I'm, I'm excited about that. Well, Clara, and I see the people that are coming from out of state, they really don't care if they're on the West End or the East End. They like a nice lot, a nice home, something maybe they can put their stamp on and, and kind of customize. And speaking of customize, I want to come back to something just for a second. When we talked about new construction, mm -hmm. I think, and, you know, Randy, we, we've kind of philosophized about this over and over sometimes, you know, I'm, I look back on my parents and my grandparents and I realize, you know, going through World War II and going through the Great War and and the Depression and whatever, everybody had a different skill set. My grandmother, till the day she died, had a victory garden because she wasn't going to, you know, she wasn't going to go to the grocery store and it'd be empty. She was going to take care of that. Well, that but that was a history tool, right? I'm concerned or, or interested in what we're building today with people that have been through the pandemic. Everybody, even people that I think of as, pardon the term, maybe a little difficult, they have had to learn to compromise too. If, if you want that perfect backsplash on the back of your new custom home, and that backsplash is going to take another three months, and you're going to have another three months of carry-in cost, and you don't get to your new home for three months, you know, I think those, those brick tiles will be fine. That'll work good. We'll use the subway tiles. That'll be nice. We don't have to have that exact, right? Are you seeing that too? I, I would say we're seeing that in some instances, absolutely making some uh, some choices on different materials to allow the job to um, get accomplished. You know, I think we, you and I spoke before, Dennis, about the house that was done and it couldn't have the certificate of occupancy because it didn't have bricks on the front of it, you know, because of supply. I, I think we're going to see some alternative choices and even maybe making alternative decisions based on what you can get. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And, but then three or four years from now, you can always, some of that can be changed. Backsplashes can be changed. Sure. You can upgrade the appliances later, you know, that kind of a thing. So backsplashes are cheap. Yes. I don't know about the brick on the front of the house though. You might want the brick <laughs> when you first start the house. You might do. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me a story before we say goodbye. Tell me a story of somebody that came to the village. You sold them a house and it was just a game changer. I mean, it was just a life changer for them. I mean, they but, got to the village and they were just, they were so blown away by this, this, the, the place it far exceeded their expectations. And I'm sure you got a bunch of those before you answer. I do want you to tell one story, even if this is not the one I want you to tell us about the lady in DeMonte that came and saw you on our podcast. 
Oh yeah, you're talking about she saw our rental podcast with Miss Cindy. With Miss Cindy, yeah, we did the joint podcast. You know, that's the beauty of the uh, Inside Out the podcast. People are, are getting a new perspective of our community, and she actually saw us and decided, you know, hey, I want to learn more about this community, and perhaps I might want to buy a house and put it on the rental program. So that did happen, and and that is so exciting. And where was she from? California? I don't know. Connecticut, I believe. Can I, a C word. A C word. <laughs> yeah. A C word. Yeah. One of the cows. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hijack your answer. Randy had a great question. I just wanted you to tell that story. Well, and, and to Randy's point, you know, I think the, the biggest compliment to our community is not one story, but the many that can be told of the one person who moved here and they fell in love. And then they told two people and then their brother or sister, their aunt, their uncle, their cousin, whomever were in their friends and family network that all live here too. And I, I, I could tell you countless of those. And I, I really think that's a testament to our community that not only is it our own community, but when we bring someone into the fold of our community, it continues to grow in that direction with others with others that also come here. I was talking to Deb Bryan in my office earlier today, and she said, yes, she had a walk-in and they came in and bought a $600,000 house. And then they had extended family members and friends who also came and visited the village, fell in love with our community and also moved here. And that is really the testament to our community, the testament to the great people that live here that, you know, you I don't know the golf course or, going to the pickleball or the, the tennis courts or go to a concert where someone's not going to sit and tell you what they love about our community. And, and that's just a great resource. Our number one resource here, here in Hot Springs Village. That's an ender, Dennis. No, that's a, I, was, I thought you had another one. That was no, ender. that's, that's I mean, come on. It's uh, listen, everybody tells us the same thing, Claire. Yeah. yeah everybody yeah. tells us the same thing. Heard about it, came over, visited, fell in love with the place. And we all use that verbiage, fell in love with the place. I've even used the word smitten, you know, because <laughs> that was, I, I was, I was, I was smitten the minute I pulled inside the gate. Uh, I was having a, a conversation with Mike Varney yesterday. Mike has been on our show. I mean, here's a guy that, I mean, Mike invested strong seven figures into the village, uh, and a golfer, and he used the same thing. He comes over every week and he's like, it still has the same feeling, man. I still pull in the gate and it's like, ah, you know, it's just, there's just this, uh, this feeling that you get. Yeah. It's, it's great. I'm going to shut getting, up Dennis. I'm getting to that age where I don't even like to leave the village much. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I had a funeral to go to this last week in Sheridan where my parents are from. And it's like an hour and 15. I was like, oh, I should pack a lunch. This is going to take so long, you know. And and I'm, I'm contrasting that to what I hear Mike Varney say when Mike Varney says with a smile on his face, it's only six hours. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I remind him it's only four. It's five for me. He lives on the other side. He's closer. Yeah. So I keep kidding him. I'm going to have to hop in his bed of his truck and, and stow away. But I think you could do that. Don't get any carbon monoxide. Listen, anything. I'm proud. Yeah. I'm proud to be a property owner. I'm just proud that to have a lot. And I'm the guy who's dreaming, you know, dreaming of the house. And, you know, and Rhonda's like, I don't know, we might want to find something smaller before. So you know, who knows, who knows what the future you gotta is. You got to solve that Texas problem. You got to solve I that do. Texas I, problem. I do. Well, listen, the, the place, the place is gorgeous. For those of you that are watching and listening, if you have never visited, um, absolutely reach out, explore hsv.com. And I would encourage our audience, even if you're not, you don't know if you're ready, you've got questions about the village, Claire and her staff are the folks to call. They are great ambassadors of the place. They know the place like the back of their hand. Give them a phone call, 1-800-364-9007. That's 1-800-364-9000. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village. I appreciate you, Claire. Thanks for sponsoring the show. Thanks for uh, all that you do for the village. 
and we appreciate the partnership. Dennis, I'll yeah. give you the last word. And well, it's Claire. been a delight. It really has, Clara. And we're glad to have you doing the update. It's a delight. We'll be back probably every month to do this. Uh, and I want to note, Randy, I uh, was looking at the website today and looking at some of the stats. And you were talking about the number two place for people to sign up or that mm -hmm. had signed up. Would you like to guess where the number two viewers were from? Number one, obviously, the United States. Where's number two? No idea. Ireland. Oh, I was going to say England. I was in the right part of the the world. Number three, China. <laughs> yeah, well. A little bit further down the list is Israel. And, you know, here, for what it's worth, Randy and I have made a serious mistake. Randy said, let's make a hyper local uh, a podcast that just <laughs> talks to the. We weren't even close. We weren't yeah. even close. No, I mean, it just shows you, you know, how big of an idiot I am. You no. know, after podcasting for, for over two decades, I told Dennis, I said, yeah, I've, I've always wanted to do what I called podcasters commonly call a hyper local podcast. You know, something that's pretty niche, admittedly, you know, not going to be sliced bread. It's not going to be something, it's not going to be the thing for everybody, a really targeted audience. But yeah, I'm thinking, okay, people that, or inside Hot Springs Village, people that visit the place, people that love the place, uh, property owners, people that would like to be property owners, people that are, you know, short-term rental folks like me at the time before I, I bought a, a piece of property from Dennis, you know, that, that'll that be it. And I mean, right out of the gate, probably within six weeks, give or take, I'm, we're getting emails and stuff from people that are in other states, multiple states away, have never been to Hot Springs Village, and I'm just, I'm puzzled. I'm like, how did you even find the place? But there are all these people, and we, we've seen this great resignation, right? We've mm -hmm. seen all of this migration as these people are like, I am sick and tired, you know, of this commute. And with COVID, a huge opportunity with internet connectivity to work remotely, um, it's just a whole different world. It's a whole different world. Personally, I kind of like it. I kind of <laughs> like it. I kind of like everything about, okay, I don't love the supply chain stuff and the price of gas, but, uh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm I'll be 65 in a month. Claire, my son is going to be 42 this summer. And he's like, you know, he's asking me for my crystal ball. And I said, no, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. My father is 98. He'll be 99 this summer, Lord willing. And I said, your grandfather, 98, he's never seen anything mm -hmm. like this. We are in unprecedented times, but I would say you want a house, you got a house to sell, just, just do it. You, you can't, I mean, come on. I bought a house with a 17% mortgage one time and I'm here alive to tell the tale. So get going up from two point whatever to five big deal child's play yeah big deal i can handle that no problem no problem well, I, I do want to mention i know we need to wrap up i got one more thing i wanted to mention for clara when i mentioned about nrpi being one of the reasons we had time back at the same time i wanted to mention 10 years ago ish hot springs village was optional you didn't have to live here well, you, you just touched on it, Randy. What With do you mean? Resi well, no, what I'm saying is people move to Hot Springs Village simply because they wanted to. You will never see somebody here in the village go, oh, I just hate it here. I didn't want to move here in the first place. Yeah. I, no. I got transferred here. Yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah, says yeah. that. Nobody right, says right. that. You, it is optional. So it's the first place. The destination. Exactly. Exactly. It's the first place you might want to come and it might be the last place you want to leave. But after you leave, we've got to have a whole new group of new people that say, hey, we want to find it. I think we've been discovered. Is that fair enough, Clara? I think we've been discovered. I, I think getting to our gates and taking that deep breath and coming into our community is still a welcoming, welcoming event. It really is. It and really if you is. haven't experienced it, audience member, firsthand, you need to. You, you really do. To. Seriously. You need to find a way to get here and experience it one time. Warning. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna wanna be here. We we have had over We've had over 1,500 five-star reviews with our four Airbnbs. And at the very, every night when somebody logs in, my little tagline says, hope you're doing well. Let us know if there's anything you need. By the way, this can be habit forming. So you've been warned. You've been warned. And uh, within one night, most people are like, yeah, I can see that. This could really be habit forming. 
Well, hopefully, and apparently, Hot Springs Village Inside Out has been habit forming, and we appreciate everybody so much. If you've watched and listened to this point, you're a patient person. So we appreciate you being with us for Hot Springs Village Inside Out. I'm Dennis Simpson. He's Randy, and I'm, oh, and, and I'm sorry, and she, she's Clara Nicolosi. She's the and star today. I'm telling you, and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star. Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by visiting our website, hsvinsideout.com, and tell a friend.